the Hallmark Charlotte Greenwood Show. Welcome now to our show. Here's a friend you all know. Charlotte Greenwood is with us again. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Charlotte Greenwood is brought to you this Sunday and every Sunday at this time by the makers of Hallmark greeting cards to remind you that every time you want to remember someone, you'll find a Hallmark card that says just what you want to say the way you want to say it. So when you choose a card, look on the back for the three identifying words, a Hallmark card. Like the word sterling on silver, those words, a Hallmark card, mean finest quality mean that you cared enough to send the very best. Yes, don't forget, a Hallmark card will best express your perfect taste, your thoughtfulness. And here is our star, that lovable lady of stage, screen, and radio, Charlotte Greenwood. City of Lakeview in the home of the Barton. The three children whose care was taken over by Charlotte when she became an heir of the Barton estate and whose bringing up would bring anybody but Charlotte down. Today, as usual, we find Charlotte on the phone talking long distance to her manager, Roger Humphrey, in Hollywood. She's saying... Hello, Roger. I just called to thank you for that lovely Valentine you sent me. It was so unexpected. Even the mailman was surprised. He came up the set singing, My dreams are getting better all the time. <laughs> Yes, Roger. I knew it was from you, even though you didn't sign it. How'd I know? That's easy. I was almost sure when I saw the postmark, and I was practically certain when I saw the handwriting. But I was absolutely positive when I saw the stamp that said postage due. <laughs> no, Roger, I'm not taking it seriously. I've lived long enough to know about life and love. <laughs> yeah, life is just one thing after another, and love is just two things after each other. <laughs> What? Well, certainly I've been in love, Roger. I used to have a boyfriend that took me out riding every evening. Gee, I can still feel those handlebars. <laughs> we were practically engaged, but one day he asked me to ride on the back mudguard, and I broke it off. <laughs> now the only men I go around with are in revolving doors. <laughs> oh, Roger, somebody's at my door now. <laughs> no, this one doesn't revolve. <laughs> I'll call you next week. Bye. Ah, Miss Greenwood. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Well, is it that good, Judge Cronin? Well, I'm glad I got here before you left for the lunchroom. Mm -hmm, well, I'm leaving in a minute, but come in. Uh, thank you. It's too bad I happened a car. I'd give you a lift, but then, as I always say, there's nothing like walking to build up red corpuscles. Yes, but it's so hard to get a corpuscle to walk. Yes, is it? <laughs> no, no, what I mean is... Well, come on in the living room. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Well, however, I haven't but a moment to stay. I simply want to turn over to you some things in connection with the estate. Well, sit down, Judge. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, 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 oh my briefcase. Oh, I'm silly. Oh, yes, yes, right here. Oh, oh let me see. Oh, yes. Here they are. Here are 100 shares of factory stock. Par value, $5,000. $5,000? That's enough to guarantee the children's future. Well, we won't have to ride over the hill to the poorhouse today. It, 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 it. Unfortunately, the stock is practically worthless. You see, it's a buggy whip factory. <laughs> a buggy whip factory? Mm -hmm. Well, that's fine. We can drive over to the poorhouse in the surrey with a fringe on top. <laughs> uh, but here, Miss Greenwood, is the deed to the Barton farm. Oh, a real farm? How marvelous. I've always wanted to lead a farmer's life. The farm has been abandoned. Well, I wouldn't want to lead an abandoned life. <laughs> but, Judge, couldn't we do something with the farm, raise chickens or ducks? Oh, that's a full-time job. You know how long ducks have to be cared for? Same as short ducks. Exactly. Huh? <laughs> no, you're not taking this thing seriously. The farm is quite valuable if we could get a help, but at the moment, the, the buildings are dilapidated, the equipment is decrepit, and the business is defunct. <laughs> how delovely. <laughs> Unfortunately, par value nil. 
Ah, but here are the deeds, surveys, and so forth pertaining to the Friendship Silver Mine. A silver mine? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. <gasps> Say, maybe this cloud has a silver lining after all. Well, huh? uh, unfortunately, the mine at the moment is little more than a hole in the ground. Yeah, well, what power on that hole? <laughs> <laughs> Please. Now, uh, naturally, the mine does have a certain value. But you see, it was purchased jointly by Mr. Barton and uh, Mr. Gregory. And, oh, uh, is that Mr. Gregory that lives in the next block? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And uh, years ago, Mr. Barton induced him to buy a 50% interest in the property. Mr. Barton honestly believed that it was rich in silver. Then they had a geologist make another survey. I, I have that report right here. Oh, dear. Look at all those big words. Feldspar, metamorphic rock. My goodness, it's going to take me all day to read this. Uh, it, 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 it. Don't bother reading it, Miss Greenwood. I can tell you what it means. It means there may be some silver in the property after all, but it'll cost a lot of money to find out. Well, if there's a chance of helping the Barton children, I'd be willing to advance the money, Judge. But it, 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 I have, now that's impossible. Mr. Barton and Mr. Gregory had an agreement that the mine could not be operated without the consent of both parties. Oh. Yes. And when Mr. Gregory found that the silver was speculative, he became very angry at Miss Barton. Gregory swore he'd never let anybody touch a shovel to the Friendship Mine property as long as he lived. Well, what kind of friendship is that to keep us from working our own mines? Well, legally he can do it, and he has for the past 20 years. He's still very bitter. In time, I hope to persuade him to relent. Meanwhile, we can count on no income from Friendship Mine. Just think, we own a factory, a farm, and a mine. All that wealth, and what have we got? Wealth is trying, isn't it, Judge? Trying? Yeah, try and get it. Metamorphic rock formation extending to a point 600 yards. I came in to say good night, Aunt Charlotte. Oh, good night, Robert. Uh, Did you finish all your homework? Yes, sir. What are you doing, Aunt Charlotte? Oh, looking over some papers Judge Cronin left this morning. Metamorphic rock formation extending. Hey, has anybody seen my history book? Oh, <clears throat> say, Jack, do you know anything about geology? No, I don't take it till next semester. Why? Oh, nothing. I was just wondering what feldspar and quartz are. Quartz? What geology? It's digging up old bones. My dog knows about it. He digs up old bones. <laughs> Bobby. Did you see my history book anyplace? It's over on the window seat, Jack, right where you left it. Oh, thanks. I must be getting absent-minded. Bobby says that's because you're in love. Oh, dry up. Jack, in love, Jack, Oh, go to bed. Well, there's nothing wrong with love, Robert. Oh, it's sissy stuff. I don't think so. How come? Well, take you now. You love your dog, and you love your home. And we're all supposed to love our neighbors. Yeah, but the girl Jack's in love with isn't our neighbor. Janet Gregory lives over in the next block. Miss Greenwood, do I have to listen to his childish prattle? Couldn't we have some adult conversation? What's an adult, Aunt Charlotte? It's a person that stopped growing at each end and started growing in the middle. (laughs) (laughs) Run along to bed, Robert. Yes, and quit talking about things you don't know anything about. Well, anyway, at least I know about quartz. What's that too fine? Good night, Aunt Charlotte. Oh, for (laughs) corn's sake. <laughs> Night, Robert. <laughs> Jack, is Janet Gregory the daughter of the man who was a friend of your father's? No, I wouldn't say friend. I guess you haven't heard what he did to us. She's his daughter, but the Bartons and the Gregorys don't speak. Yes, as a matter of fact, I have heard what Mr. Gregory did, but it seems pretty silly for you and Janet to be quarreling about something that happened before either of you were born. Well, it might seem silly to you, Miss Greenwood, but we Bartons never forget. You don't? Then you're just the one I'm looking for to mail some letters. Letters? Valentine's. I'll get them. They're right here in this table. Now put them in your pocket and mail them on your way to school in the morning. Well, what are those in the drawer? Oh, there are a couple of Valentine's that were left over. Hey, that one's pretty good looking. What'd you say? Let's see. I can't send you orchids. There's a shortage this year. And you'd put an orchid to shame. That's nice. <laughs> yeah. I can't send you jewels. Well, they're scarce, too, I hear, and the outcome would be much the same. (laughs) So I'm sending this package. Be careful, don't break. It's fragile. Still, you can depend. It'll be yours forever if you'll only take my heart. From yours, truly, a friend. (laughs) It's kind of (laughs) cute. Jack. Huh? Why don't you send it to Janet Gregory? Are you kidding? Isn't Janet a nice girl? Nice? Why, she's... Oh, gosh, she's simply... 
Miss Greenwood, Janet's a Gregory, and I'm a Barton. Under those circumstances, how do you think two young people should stand? Close together, I think. <laughs> well, we don't even speak. Now, if you'll pardon me, I'll go down to the corner and mail these letters for you right away. Jack, see who's at the front door, will you? Sweetheart, 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 will you love me? Happy Valentine Eve, Miss Greenwood. Oh, right on my high note. Hi, Junior. I couldn't help it. Hey, you know, something standing there, you sure look like a picture. Well, anybody would with a frame like mine. <laughs> oh, please. Yeah, you certainly can make with a quick quip, can't you? <laughs> Uh, look, uh, I couldn't seem to find the kind of valentine to suit you, so I brought you this bag of candy. Oh, well, look at here, look at here. Yeah. Peppermint heart, stick candy, and lemon drop. Yeah. Hope you don't mind me leaving out the lollipops, but I didn't think they were sophisticated. Nope. Lollipops is just for the sucker trade. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, say, are you a solid sender? <laughs> well, you're pretty happy yourself. <laughs> oh, I'll say I am. Yes, sure. You know, you ought to see me the other night down the Rose Room dance hall. Yeah? Oh, I showed them jitterbugs a thing or two. Yeah. I was dancing around and dancing around. I was the hit of the evening. Oh, did you have a clever partner? Huh? I say, who did you dance with? I suppose you dance with somebody. Oh. <laughs> oh, Junior, well, thanks for the candy. Anyway, it's deeply appreciated. No, that's nothing. Why, for a friend like you, I'd, uh, I'd swim clear across the ocean. Junior, yes, you would. swim all that ocean for me. Why, of course. And I'd be just as gallant for any other gal. I know, but would you be just as buoyant as any other boy? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't see why not. I was first in my scout troop to win my wings. Oh, well, you win your wings in the Air Corps. These are water wings. <laughs> <laughs> I topped you that time, didn't I? <laughs> well, Junior, yeah. if you'd swim the ocean, would you do one more thing for me? Me? Why, sure thing. For you, Miss Greenwood, I'd I'd climb the highest mountain. Huh? I'd walk through fire while I'd face floods. I'd what you want me to do? Run, little errand. Oh, but it looks like rain. I might get wet. Oh, <laughs> but this is important. I'm sending a Valentine, and I want to make sure that it gets to the right person. All right. Where does it go to? To that big house in the middle of the next block. Deliver it personally to Miss Janet Gregory. Good morning. Uh, where's Jack Barton? Why, uh, oh, he's left for school. Oh, I presume you're Mrs. Greenwood? Well, you're not a very good presumer. It isn't Mrs. Greenwood, it's Miss Greenwood. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh-huh. You're sorry. <laughs> May I tell Jack who called? No, no, I forbid you to even mention it to him. Well, then perhaps I could be of some help. Young woman, I forbid you to interfere in my affairs. Oh, my, you've got a forbidding personality. Well, well, now you look here. Apparently you don't know who I am. Well, I know that you're not the good humor man. <laughs> My name is Gregory. Oh, Mr. Gregory? Oh, come in. Come in. I haven't set foot inside the Barton house for 20 years, and I don't intend to do so now. Well, what are you afraid of? I'm not afraid of anything. It's no concern of yours, but I hated John Barton and everything about him. Oh, you see, you are afraid of something. You know, a person may dislike a thing and treat it with indifference or even contempt. Hmm. But when he goes to the trouble of hating it, he's afraid of it. <laughs> Miss uh, Greenwood, I came here to speak to Jack Barton. But since you seem to be in charge of things here, I'll talk to you. Well, now, just what can I do for you? Keep Jack away from my daughter. Oh, but Mr. Gregory, he doesn't even speak to Janet. He doesn't speak to her. She doesn't speak to him. But I won't have him making sentimental overtures or sending her valentines. Oh, <laughs> oh well, Mr. Gregory, your worries are over. <laughs> I sent that valentine myself. You did? You, you sent it? Well, that's right. I thought Janet might like it, and I'm sorry that she assumed it was from Jack. Hmm. So you thought Janet might like it, eh? Why the sudden interest in her? A friendly gesture. Is there anything wrong with sending a valentine to a no. neighbor? No, not at all. But uh, I can see through your little play. While Cronin works on me and trying to persuade me to open up the mine, uh, you proceed to get friendly with Janet. Oh, eh? now, just one moment. Only please. it isn't going to work, Miss Greenwood. I'll see to it that you never develop the friendship mine. But, Mr. Gregory... Good morning. <laughs> The meaning 
of a valentine goes deeper than its bit of lace, its bows and ribbons, hearts and flowers. It carries a message from someone dear to us. It embraces us in thought in spite of miles or years of separation. And especially this year, valentines are forget-me-nots that keep us young in heart, that renew our faith and friendship, help to ease the ache of wartime loneliness. Next Wednesday is Valentine's Day, yet you still have time to remember your dear ones with heartwarming valentines. Choose them tomorrow at your Hallmark dealers. There are exquisite valentines for mother or for the mother of your sweetheart. There are affectionate messages Dad will prize. You'll smile at the clever, humorous valentines and at the cute little cutouts designed especially for youngsters. Yes, and for sweethearts, and for married sweethearts. For all the family, all your friends, you'll find lovely Hallmark valentines that say just what you want to say the way you want to say it. So select your valentines tomorrow. Hallmark cards are on display at America's finest stores. Remember, a Hallmark card will best express your perfect taste, your thoughtfulness. And so back to our story. The innocent, friendly little valentine which Charlotte sent to Janet Gregory has released an avalanche of trouble. For Mr. Gregory seems to think it's all part of a scheme to induce him to open up friendship minds. And now he's more stubborn than ever. Meanwhile, that same evening at the Barton home. Hello. I want to talk to Mr. Gregory. But this is important. Well, then, is Miss Janet Gregory there? All right. Oh, the door. Just a minute. Miss Gregory? Oh, Miss Gregory, uh, last evening you received a valentine by messenger and it... But, Miss Gregory, uh, Jack Barton didn't send it to you. I say, Jack Barton didn't send it to you. Hello? Hello? Oh, dear. Everything happens at once. Why, Judge Cronin, and if it isn't Mr. Anderson... Charlotte, we've been standing here for five minutes. Yes, and it's pouring down rain. Oh, Judge, I'm... I forgot it was raining. Why, you're all wet. Oh, you poor dear. Oh. <laughs> well, well, what about me? Huh? How about my driving him along? And I'm trying to make my car outlast the war. Well, stop worrying, Mr. Anderson. It outlasts the last war, didn't it? Well, yes. <laughs> oh, wait. Well, now, here, let me have your coat. Oh, no, 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 no. We can't stay. I simply brought these papers I forgot to give you yesterday. Just put them away with the rest of the data on the mine. Oh, good. I'll have something more to read. Uh, you mean you read that other geologist report I gave you? Thoroughly. Tell me, Judge, what is shale? <laughs> <laughs> Just like a woman, Cronin. Yeah. She reads, but she doesn't know what she's reading yeah. about. <laughs> it's such a simple yeah. thing, too, Shay. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody knows what that is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you tell her, Anderson. Yes, I do. <laughs> shale, what is it? Oh, Shale. Yeah. Shale. 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 Yeah. shale. shale. Uh, don't rush me now. Well, it's, uh, it's a sort of a... No. No, it's more of a... Shale. Shale, shale, that's the word. Oh, yes, yes. A shale is a cross between a shark and a whale. <laughs> yes, uh, well, what's uh, ferro-oxide? <clears throat> this one's on you, Cronin. Uh, me, I'll say that. Oh, uh, ferro-oxide. Mm. That's uh, following your line of reasoning, Anderson. I should say that it is a ferro-oxide. But that's a cross between a ferret and an ox. Ferret inside and ox outside. Ferro outside. It's very simple. Oh, oh. Oh, boy. You boys are really blunch. Blunch? Mm, that's a cross between a bluff and a hunch. <laughs> but now, look, about the mine, if I could only talk to Mr. Oh, Gregory... Oh, no, 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 please, please. I've been working on him for five years. Please don't interfere. You might ruin everything. You must realize he controls your destiny to have and have not. But Paramount. No, that's Warner Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> what I mean is, I'll do the talking to this gentleman. Oh, hello, Judge Cronin. Hello, Mr. Anderson. Oh, good evening, Jack. Hi, Jack. Got a date tonight? What, a boy slicked up like that? <laughs> sure he has. All ready for some girl to take. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Anderson, I know how to deal with women. Here, I wonder who that is. How do you do? Why, Janet. Janet? Not Janet Gregory. Yes, Janet Gregory. 
And I'd like a few words with you, Jack Barton. Why, of course, Janet. So it was a mistake, was it? So you really didn't send it to me. Send it? It was intended for some other girl, was it? Intended for some... Maybe it was even the other girl who called me up. But, but Janet, I... Oh, here. Here, you can have it back. Have what? Here's your valentine. Oh, but Janet, I... Good night. Well, that, that's right, Jack. Nothing like knowing how to deal with women. <laughs> but, but this valentine, Miss Greenwood, this is the valentine you showed me last night. I know, Jack. I thought Janet might like it. Like it? Did you hear what she said to me? Oh, you got off easy. You should have heard what her father said to me when he came here this morning. What's that? Her father? Here? And Janet thinks I sent it. Oh. She's had an opportunity to come here and bore me out. I'll never live this down. I've got to catch it. Greenwood. In spite of my warning, could you talk to Gregory? When I could get a word in, he was so furious, I never saw a man with such a temper. Oh, this is terrible, and after I worked years to soften him up. Yeah, well, you did a great job. He's as soft as concrete. Oh. Oh, come on, Anderson, we'll try to see him at his home. Come on, come, 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 come on. I'm come still on. an editor. I've got a newspaper to get out. Well, now, wait a minute. Now, I've got something to say. You've said too much already. You've ruined everything. Gregory, come in. I will not. I haven't been in this house for 20 years. Before I do come in, it'll be another 20. Oh, you're going to get awfully wet standing out there in the rain all that time. I didn't come here to discuss the rain. The weather's usually unusual at this time of year, but tonight it's unusually more unusual than usual. <clears throat> as usual. <clears throat> That's foolishness. Well, it's not as foolish as standing in the rain, and at least you can come in the hall, please. Well. Oh, come on, there's nothing wrong with this house. It hasn't changed a bit in 20 years. Hmm. No. No, I guess it hasn't. That living room in there looks just like it used to. Same old piano. Needs tuning, but it still plays. Eh, we used to have some great times around that piano in the old days. Of an evening, all the kids in the neighborhood would drop in. They still do. Eh, that old Marlowe, Gracie, Selby, uh, Davy, Lickett, uh-huh. and myself. Yes, yeah, some great old times. I wonder what's become of the old gang. Funny how friends slip away from you. Why do you let them? Oh, I don't know. I'll probably get busy and wrapped up in other things. And then all of a sudden you realize that that is... But I'm looking for Janet. Now, where is she? Well, I don't know, but she isn't here. Now, don't try to make me believe that. I know she is here. I followed her. I expected you would. In fact, I was counting on it. You counted on it? Would you mind explaining that remark? Well, you'll have to listen very carefully. It's rather complicated. Never mind about that. Well, first, I was trying to get in touch with you all day, but you wouldn't talk to me, so I phoned Janet. Why? What's she got to do with it? I thought you wanted to talk to me. Well, I thought if I could get Janet to come here and give the valentine back, that you'd come here to take Janet back. <laughs> you certainly have the angles, haven't you? <laughs> I'd much rather you'd call them curves. <laughs> Where's Janet? Well, she's left 20 minutes ago. Oh, why don't you relax, Mr. Gregory? Uh, would you have a cup of hot chocolate? No, I don't drink chocolate. A piece of cake? I don't eat cake. Have a chair? I don't... You... <laughs> well, you do sit down, don't you? Miss Greenwood, may I remind you I don't make friendly visits? Do you understand? Certainly, yes. To make friendly visits, you have to have friends. Well, I don't need friends. They don't pay off. I never bother with anything that doesn't pay off. I'm a practical man. Oh, yes, it would take a very practical man to keep up a quarrel for 20 years and remain bitter all that time. That has nothing to do with it. I'm sure it's paid off handsomely. You must be ever so much richer because of it. Now, wait a minute. And how clever to have passed on that practicality to your daughter. It'll make her life so much richer, too. Will you please? And you've given her such a marvelous start. By the time she reaches your age, she should be twice as rich as you are and twice as lonesome. I am not lonesome. Why, why, I meet dozens of people every day. Oh, lonesomeness can be with you when you mingle with a thousand people and disappear when you walk with one friend. Mm-hmm. Janet! What? Why, Janet? And Jack Barton, what? Oh, hello, Mr. Gregory. Where have you two been? Nowhere, just walking. Walking in this rain? Oh, is it raining? <laughs> yeah, I guess it is. Oh, we didn't exactly notice it, but Jack, I thought you and Janet weren't speaking. Well, well, we talked that all over and decided we would speak. A Barton speaking to a Gregory. Oh, Jack. <laughs> well, if a Gregory's good enough to speak to a Barton, a Barton's good enough to speak to a Gregory. Eh, you're right, my dear. And what for if... if uh, 
Uh, wait a minute. Uh, yes, you've raised quite a serious question, Janet. Maybe you and Jack better wait in the living room while we're thinking this over. Okay. Come on, Janet. I've got some new Andy Russell records. Oh, well. Uh, well, Miss Greenwood, I... I seem to have been a nitwit. Well, but isn't it fun sometimes being a nitwit? <laughs> <laughs> Pardon me. But I tell you, Cronin, I've got a newspaper oh, to get out. That Back again, boy? Yes, we couldn't do... Why? Oh, wait. <laughs> he's, he's here. Mr. Gregory. Oh, everything is settled. Uh, Gregory, I want to talk to you about that mine. The mine? Yes. Oh, so that's it. Well, I was right after all. The whole affair was a trick to induce me to open up the friendship mine. No, Mr. Gregory, just to open up a friendship. Well, the mine's no good. Now, I told Barton that 20 years ago, and I've got a geologist to report to prove it. Yes, I've got a copy of that report, too. That's why I was trying to get in touch with you. The report says that the mine has a big deposit of cassiterite. Huh? Uh, what do I have? Don't either of you gentlemen know? Well, uh, uh, of course, yes. Mm-hmm. Cassiterite, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, Cass, that, that's from cash. Mm-hmm. Uh, sit, mm-hmm. from uh, sit. Yeah. And uh, right, from uh, right. Means uh, sitting right at a cash register. <laughs> <laughs> right, Mr. Anderson. I looked it up in my little dictionary. Cassiterite is the ore from which they get tin. Why, tin is one of the scarcest and most valuable metals in this country today. That was in the geologist's report. Why didn't I see that? Well, yeah, maybe it was because you were so bitter... That's the trouble with getting so blind mad. You can't see anything right. Yeah, well, look, now, I've got to get out of here. I've got a newspaper to get uh, out. Did, 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 now, wait, Anderson. I want to read that report. Oh, all right. All right, go ahead. What good is a newspaper, anyhow? Why, Mr. Anderson, I thought every man knew that. Huh? A newspaper is what you hide behind when a woman's standing up in the bus. <laughs> Charlotte Greenwood will be back in a moment. Meanwhile, I want to remind you again, the next time you buy a card for any occasion, look on the back for the identifying words, a Hallmark card. H-A-L-L-M-A-R-K. A A Hallmark card. Like sterling on silver, those three words are your assurance of finest quality. They tell your friends you cared enough to send the very best. Yes, a Hallmark card will best express your perfect taste, your thoughtfulness. And now, Charlotte Greenwood. Friends, I think Mr. Gregory found out something even more valuable than the fact that the mine contained tin. He found out that there is nothing more important to our happiness than loving companionship. The war has taken that companionship from many of us. Still, we can stay close to most of our dear ones by writing often even if it's only a little note or something, to let them know that we're still thinking of them. Because with every message we send, we are fashioning and fastening the lifeline of friendship. And now, until next Sunday, at the very same time, this is Charlotte Greenwood saying, Wendell Niles speaking. This is the Blue Network. 1230 at KECA, Los Angeles.